In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I would like to explore seeking Christ in the Proverbs that we heard tonight. Here are a few, few of the phrases from this section, just to remind you what was read. The righteous chooses his friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer hears not rebuke. Righteousness keeps him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Solomon contrasts wisdom and foolishness and righteousness with, we with wickedness. This ethical instruction is intentionally placed in our daily readings as a reminder to us during this time of preparation. During Lent, on the weekdays, we shift away from the epistles and gospel to the reading from the Old Testament. We read from Genesis, Isaiah, and Proverbs, and in Holy Week from Exodus, Ezekiel, and Job. Have you considered why we shift to the Old Testament during this time? It is for the purpose of instructing us in the whole of salvation history. In this time of preparation, we immerse ourselves in the writings that transpired as the world was preparing for the coming of Christ. Proverbs specifically reminds us that Lent is a time for moral effort. This quote attributed to Athanasius of Alexandria and others from the book of Paradise of the Holy Father speak to how we can approach moral effort. One of the fathers asked Abba Nastir, what is the best work for me to do? And he said to him, not all kinds of labor are the same. For the book says that Abraham was a lover of strangers and God was with him. And Elijah was a lover of silent contemplation and God was with him. And David was a humble man and God was with him. Therefore, whatsoever, work your soul wishes to do, provided that be of God, that do and keep your heart from evil things. We should be about the things that align our lives with God's will. In Proverbs, we have guidance to align our lives towards righteousness and wisdom. Christ has come and embodied the fullness of both righteousness and wisdom. He transforms our understanding of these aspirations. Righteousness has a meaning beyond the basic understanding of conforming to a moral code. It also implies relationship, specifically the relationship between God and man, and man and God. The literal or historical reading of the Proverbs leads us to the law of God. Christ has tra transformed this understanding to a relationship with him. For example, in 2 Corinthians it says, For our sake he made him to be sin." who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection of Christ have given us the opportunity to put our faith in him and become the fullness of righteousness. Wisdom, likewise, has been transformed from the pursuit of worldly knowledge to relationship with wisdom, the person Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians it says, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God and the source of all wisdom. Draw near to him and seek true wisdom. You have an opportunity to encounter Christ even in the daily readings of the Old Testament. If you do not already see Christ in these readings, you can start to do so now. For example, from today's verses, Proverbs 12, 28 says, In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. This foreshadows Christ being the way, the truth, and the life. Believe in him and you shall inherit eternal life. Each stanza is an opportunity to see Christ in a more meaningful way. Seek out Christ in these readings and prepare yourselves to receive the wisdom and righteousness of God. Dear brothers and sisters, may we increasingly seek wisdom and righteousness as we continue our journey on the Lenten path towards the glory of Pascha. Amen. Amen.